Yeah, <laughs> like, especially if people are trying to ask you important questions, right? Like, yeah, like and, how to deal or something. Yeah, so true. And then sometimes um, more than one person's wanting help at one time, and then both are chatting in the same chat about two different things at the same time and other people have a hard time tracking it then i i'm afraid that some people w would just be like oh you know it's too busy i'm not going to try to squeeze my question in so we um had a suggestion actually from a new person in the vip room and she recommended that we take the chat over to a situation where it's like a private Facebook group so that way they can post their question it stays where we can find it people can comment on it I can answer the questions um, it's just like better I think um, more structured, it's more clear yeah for sure yeah and the notifications too on and on the chat room we're just absurd okay like yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, at all hours of the day and night and i'm guilty of that too but yeah just basically i had to silence it i know it was like i think it was the other night i was like doing work i was doing like facebook related stuff you know talking to people in chats and stuff like ding, yeah. ding 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 i'm like oh shit i gotta mute this thing yeah it's uh yeah. it's overwhelming and then and then um we, we have a, a really, really awesome guy in the VIP that said yesterday, he was like, hey, I had to mute the notifications on that chat because um, there's so much going on in the VIP chat room that the yeah. notifications are just nonstop 24 seven. And uh, so I unmuted, I, I muted it. So, but then it slid down the list so far in my, in my Facebook messenger <laughs> that yeah. I can't find it. And I was like, "Oh man, how do you, how do you fix that? How do I help him find something he's unmuted? Because even if I tagged him, then he doesn't get a notification." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is becoming problematic." And then uh, we had a lady in the VIP room uh, just say, "Hey, why don't we move to a Facebook private group?" I was like, "You know, that's the best idea. And why didn't anybody else think of this?" Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, man, that's a good problem to have. The fact that people are that engaged in it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I feel very blessed that that the people in our VIP club are just so interactive and yeah. open and warm and welcoming too, and friendly. Like, uh, of course, we wouldn't have it any other way. We wouldn't have it any other way. We, you know, like if you're gonna learn something and you want to study something and you look for assistance and help and all that it needs to be the right atmosphere you know what i mean yeah no doubt so and that that's what we have over there so it's great man i i'm, I'm so glad that you're a part of it too bob and again glad thanks for joining us too. man yeah well thank you thanks for joining us here too um what's it like down in florida today in kansas city it's been like frigid cold for some reason and uh now it's warm since like i, I went to bed last night <laughs> And I'm like, okay, it's uh, kind of cold. And then I, I wake up in the middle of the night all hot. And, and now it's like warm outside. So Your body like, doesn't know how to feel. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Chicago. Oh, really? That's what Chicago's like, huh? Yeah. Well, today it's like all going to be rainy and warm. So what's it like in Florida, man? Tell me sunshine and beautiful. And I didn't even look. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, the sun is out for sure. You know, it'll probably rain for a couple minutes on and off like it does, you know, but look, man, I'm still a newbie down here. Don't forget. Like, you know, I'm a Pennsylvania really? boy. You know, I just moved oh, down yeah. here less than a year ago. So, well, so not long <laughs> enough to miss the snow, right? I wouldn't say that much. Really? Huh. Um, you miss the snow. You you like oh, the four no, seasons? No, 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 I don't. Never mind. I, I totally <laughs> okay. I totally see what, what you said. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm down in Florida and I miss the snow, especially around the holidays. Yeah. yeah, Jessica. So glad you're here too. What part of Florida are you coming from? I live uh, near Daytona. Oh yeah. East Coast. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you're uh, Delray Beach. No, I'm over that's... in Delray. Yeah. Delray, How far yeah. is that, Jessica? I feel like we're we're ways away, right? Delray. No, I don't think so. Probably like a, a little bit over an hour, I think. 
ish. Who's how much I know. <laughs> well, what's going on in the uh, world of of short sales and, and foreclosures? You know, yep. I've seen some pretty pretty wild things with these stimulus bills that they're trying to put together and everything. You know, I try not to watch a lot of that garbage. Uh, it'll have your head swimming in every direction but positive, you know? Uh, I, I try to stay away from the news myself, honestly. It's just a spew of negative. I mean, I mean that's how they make their money is just from trying to freak people out. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, um, what's your yeah. sense of things, and, and, and how does that impact the uh, the short sales and, and, and foreclosures and people that are suffering and so on and so forth? And, yeah. You know, what's, your, what's your projection for us? Yeah, um, I think I posted this in your group uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, too. So like with all the stimulus packages and forbearances and all the stuff the lenders are doing, um, a lot of it. So so there's a small percentage of people. It, it, it is going to help them long term. It's going to help them get back on their feet, you know, when they get back to their job, so on and so forth. Uh, in my opinion, the vast majority of people, uh, it's only going to be a short term solution, the stimulus packages and forbearances. So you know when when you look towards the end of the year let's say four to six maybe seven months from now i think what's going to happen is um when the forbearances wear off you know and the stimulus packages expire i think a lot of people are um going to find themselves in a really distressed situation you know that's I just my opinion. Yeah. And i think there's going to be an uptick in foreclosures and uh underwater properties sure. yeah um and so then does that open up a, a vast ocean of opportunity for us as real estate investors and and so on and so forth? So obviously it depends on what market you're in as an investor because every market and sub market is different. However, I would highly suggest whatever your market is, look into pre foreclosures. That doesn't even mean referring me deals that are underwater. I'm talking about like, yeah, the underwater pre foreclosures, but the high equity stuff too, man, there's going to be you know, there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to fall into pre foreclosure because they lost their job. You know, the unemployment rate is through the roof right now. And a, a, a lot of these people, Justin, they have equity. That's not an issue, but they're just going to be super motivated and have to sell and cash out. So, yeah, I would yeah. definitely say start to look into those pre foreclosure lists in your area for sure. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Um, folks are getting motivated by the second it feels like um i, I just had a, an email flow into my my email box here this morning it was uh it was a uh, a referral somebody from the vip club um and really it's not limited to the vip club guys um anybody out there that's listening to the sound of my voice uh <laughs> could do this but it, it was a uh, referral notice that that somebody from the VIP club was linking up with you, Bob, to yep. turn over these leads as they run across them. Uh, they're dead leads, you know. There's there's stuff that wholesalers can't do diddly squat with. Yep. Uh, even if you're in the pre uh, pretty house creative business, uh, what are you going to do? Um, they're so deep in default, and the house is over leveraged, and blah blah. Uh, next that's what we would normally say but um yeah so people this is kind of catching up a little bit people are kind of catching on and and hey you know we, we don't have to throw these leads in the trash yeah uh we can connect up with bob um so um yeah anybody out there that wants to 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 have a relationship like that well, where you can take these dead leads like that those those foreclosures that are well almost foreclosed yeah and and you know make some money out of it without doing all the short sale work uh bob's a great guy uh he's a wonderful relationship for the real estate wholesalers club to have so yeah um i'm gonna put his information in the description and uh chats and all that i've been checking around a little bit on social media here and i don't see us i don't see us broadcasting where we normally do uh, again it's like every day i discover a new technology problem um but we'll make sure that we get Bob's information everywhere that we put this video eventually. So um, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to him. What do you have for him? You got like a, you got a little booklet, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really easy, it's just a six page ebook. It just goes, um, you know, gives you the basics of what a short sale is, 
what to look for, the two factors to look for when you guys are hustling, trying to get your wholesale deals and, um, uh, you know, pretty much how it works. I mean, it's a very easy process. Yeah. It's literally taking leads that you can't do anything with because they don't fit your criteria, right? It's negative equity. So they, so, so, so you can't assign these leads and just sending them over. I am sending right. you right back a signed contract guarantees your payment, um, 500 bucks for every lead. And then you just get a check for literally doing essentially no work. And um, I'm, I'm really, really good in communication. So you'll always know, hey, this person wants to do a short sale, doesn't want to do a short sale. Um, and then I'll hook you up to an automated spreadsheet. So you'll be able to follow the deal and just know when you're yeah. doing it. I mean, it's like, it's literally like very little to no work. Yeah, exactly, guys. I mean. Well, how do you get the book? <laughs> What's that? How do you get it? <laughs> uh through my e send send me your email you could um dm me on facebook which is most of the people from justin's group have been doing that i also have a um form on my website which is just universalshortsales.com and i'm gonna leave all that info um there and justin always leaves it too but uh like i said i'm right in the group i'm in the vip group um you know right on facebook so just pm me your email is the best way okay but, yeah any of those methods are cool uh, it's like that booklet's going to be on the uh, Amazon bestsellers uh, <laughs> any day now. I can yeah. feel it. Uh, it. No, it's really good, man. It really is. I, I'm, I'm kind of sounding funny, but it's, it, it's good. It, it's right to the point. In fact, it will tell you what you would need to say to the homeowner if you were in a situation where you've called a lead and they're underwater about to be foreclosed upon. And yeah. so, I mean, get the book at least um, if you're, if you're like, hey, you know, I, I need to know more about this, that's a great way to start. So yeah, 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 for sure. And keep something in mind too. I mean, you know, the extra five hundred per lead is awesome because you're creating, you know, a secondary source of income to your um, short sale business, and then also you're still able to help somebody. You know, instead of just kind of hanging up the phone on them, sorry, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I can't help you. You know, this is I, I mean, it just feels good to help people sometimes. You know, right. I mean, the money's nice. Don't get me wrong, but know you're just offering them another solution you know um, yeah. another tool out of your toolbox so it's uh, just another way to make money too as a wholesaler yeah. it's another income stream it's another way to monetize what would have been a dead lead um, yeah 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 i mean think about like the first half of the year let's say you go six months you know and you send me like let's say somewhere between three to five deals or whatever let's say i convert three of them you know, you're not going to get paid maybe from like three to five months, but I mean, you'll just forget about, it. you know, it's dead leads that you just yeah. referred. And then all of a sudden, a couple months later, you're just getting a check or, you know, PayPal, Venmo, however you want me to pay you. It's, yeah. You know, it's nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, it'd be nice to be sitting around the house one night and uh, check your stuff and you get a notification and that you got a $1,500 payment from uh, Bob because he, he worked three of those leads all the way through exactly. and, but you know, there you go. Uh, that, no. That's that's. Hey, man, you know, that's that's not. You can't shake your head at that. I mean, that's that's really a lifesaver for a lot of people. Uh, yep. That kind of money. You know what I mean? Like that would really, really go a long way for some folks. Yeah. And uh, instead, yeah, you know, while, Justin, too, like you know, people will say, oh, they'll kind of like scoff at the five hundred every once in a while. But you have to understand that, like. I'm not asking you to send me your hot leads, you know, that Justin's yeah. teaching you guys to get. I'm not saying, hey, listen to what Justin says, you know, go off those hot leads and then just send them my way. No, make your money in your primary business, which is wholesaling. You guys are going to kill it most likely, <laughs> in the village, yeah. right? And then just the dead leads, you know, the stuff that you literally can't do anything with, you're going to throw them away. Those are the ones that you could monetize. So it's $500 or zero. Right. I'm not exactly. coming after the hot leads. I don't want those. It's kind of a no-brainer, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's what I thought when I first heard it. I was like, yeah. well, it, it kind of makes sense to me. Uh, right, 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 right. I could get nothing, or I could get five hundred. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'll take the five hundred, Bob. Yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> <Tough> decision. <laughs> uh, hey, Bob. Thanks for stopping in, man. Check Absolutely. them out over there, Universal Sort Sales dot com and uh, we'll see you next week man thanks for having me man see you next week if anyone has right. questions pm me and uh facebook happy to help okay yeah that's great man thanks for being all right, guys. well i sent you a friend request on the vip room so okay all right edward sounds good see you guys all right bye-bye right.
Well, hey, everybody. It's good hey, to see everybody Brian. here. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few folks here in the Zoom room. Um, Janet and me and Edward and Victor and Ricky and Jessica and Aisha. Um, feel free, guys, all of you, guys and gals, both of you, just unmute your microphones, participate with us here. We're going to we're gonna try to role play a little bit today, too. Um, and I know some of you have already warmed up. Victor's already warmed up. <laughs> yeah, He's I already. On, I was on the call earlier. We had we we ended up with like six people, man. I, it turned out to be cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's hard almost to get everybody in on when you got six people though. If you do the full role play, oh yeah, you find... no. yeah. We we only we only got to do we got to do like two and a half. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. fun though. You know that's really what makes somebody great it and i put this um i put this i don't know if it's a meme or what it is it's like <laughs> i think of it as the equivalent of you remember you used to walk into somebody's office and they'd have these these long and tall posters and it would be like a golf green and then it would have like success in big letters or something like that and then it'd have like a short pithy statement that was like it's all about practice never give up or something you, you guys remember that shit mm -hmm. it was like it was like in everybody's office well this i posted something just like that kind of in uh in the vip chat before we moved it to the the private group and by the way guys if you're out there listening and you've been in the private chat it's a private group now check the chat or hit us up we'll get you in the right place okay uh for organization's sake for you know it was a great idea uh, I believe Aisha down there is the one who told us, hey, why don't you do this? And I was like, you know, that's smart. I don't know why nobody thought of that. But anyway, so thank you for that, uh, Aisha. Um, but anyway, I put it in the chat before we moved there. And it said, embarrassment is the price you have to pay to become a graceful master instead of a stumbling beginner. You know, it's uh -huh. it, it, and yeah, man, role playing is, yeah, it's a little embarrassing, man. I mean, have you ever stepped up to do the role play and then, like, literally felt like you was about, like, physically, like you was about to get in a fight with somebody? You know what I'm talking about? Like, you get that nervous feeling and you kind of shaky a little bit and maybe even your voice is kind of trembly and you're not sure what you're going to say or how this is going to work out. But And it's it, you could be embarrassed. Man, all of that, I, I, I've been through that. I know what that's like. It It's a it's not a fun feeling and the only way to get through that is just to practice with people like us that that you you can trust us hey you can trust me okay <laughs> you can trust me uh yeah no for real we we do uh trust each other here with the with the role plays um you know because we have each other's best interests in mind we want to help each other encourage one another and that's the only way we get better is by practicing. And if you don't have some dudes or, or gals like this to practice with, then who and how can you practice? So I'm a firm believer in the practice of the role play. And I'm so thankful for everybody that wants to do this with us. But yeah, that's the key. Uh, I see Rick in here. Uh, did you guys have any discussions on the VAs that we were talking about yesterday before we role play? Um, anybody have a any more that they'd like to ask or talk about on the virtual assistants? Did anybody go home last night and have a come to Jesus meeting with their virtual assistant? No, um, I don't have any. So okay, I do it last night. But <laughs> I did you, do a portal. You, you shared some things that were um, that re were really important. I just had uh, a couple of VAs. A lot of times, what I'll do is I'll do it, what you suggested. I'll order a five dollar gig or something. Mm -hmm. And I'll have the same VAs kind of on the same project, and I'll have yeah. I'll look and see who gives me the highest quality work, right? But um, what I found was that there was a significant breakdown in communication. And when you shared how they communicated and the type of stuff that they would say and the difference yeah. and you know the cultural differences yeah. in what they think they're saying and what they really mean, type of of thing and it really kind of caused a breakdown and when it was all said and done i felt like i just kind of spent some money i got some stuff i don't know the quality of it yet because i have to go through it and i basically had them putting together some lists 
of um, uh, some asset managers um, for my retail side of the business. And I, you know, I'm doing some, what they call yeah. the affinity marketing stuff. So what I did is I had them cross reference um, people from LinkedIn onto other uh, social media platforms. Yeah. So that I could, you know, get in there, find out what their interests are, and you, you know, that that whole sort of thing, right? Come in from yeah. the back door. With, yeah. With, yeah. You know, some commonalities, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but in dealing with them, I did find that the communication is vital, and if you don't handle it on the upfront, yeah. uh -huh. you will find yourself just spending. Uh -huh. You know, it'll be a chip here, a chip there, but uh -huh. you, look up, you spent two hundred dollars and ain't got nothing for it. Right. Right. I saw a guy, he was telling me a week or two ago, He, I was telling him, hey, you got to have this come to Jesus meeting with your crew. I mean, your your virtual assistant, they're, they're not clear on what you want or they're not clear on that you're the boss and that you really do give a shit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of these guys have, the virtual assistants have worked with dudes before that really weren't all that serious too. Um, you know, and I'm talking about investors. There's a lot of investors out there who 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 try a virtual assistant like it's some kind of a platform you can subscribe to and see if you like it. And you know, the virtual assistants they're like, oh, I don't know, is this guy a clown or is this guy serious? I don't know yet. Well, he's probably a clown, honey. You know, uh, well, the last guy was a clown. Well, the last three guys were clowns. You know? But when you come to the table like that, more firm and aggressive, and you are professional about it and you care about your business and business is <clears throat> this is a business relationship and business is numbers and business is important and business must move forward that's a different kind of cat you know that's a different guy and they it demands a different kind of respect and and i, I and you you'll get it you know, from most of them you know and, and but i saw a guy a, a week or two ago he was in such a position with his virtual assistant that he had uh, he had paid for like a month in advance or something and uh, and I, I was like did you have that come to Jesus meeting with him he was like well I I really couldn't because I've already paid him everything like I I'm like okay so you know lesson learned here you know what I mean you you got to have you <laughs> it's like uh, you can't give him all the money right now today and expect him to stay faithful and true you know for the next thirty days. And then if you do have if you do have a problem with them, what leverage do you have? You you ain't got no leverage. They'll fire your ass. They're the boss now. You know what I mean? So you know, that's stuff you don't think about when you're moving into this stuff. And 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 you should really. You should think about that stuff. It's important. Um, thanks for sharing that, Victor. That was that was big. Um, anybody else got anything they'd like to add about virtual assistants or questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh uh, yeah, today, like, you know, uh, like every day I, I, I you know, I, I have like the company type meeting and then the next day it's like, I got to do it again. <laughs> it's like, yeah. time for enough. I'm about to like get on the phone with them now and be like, hey, you know, uh, you know, we can't keep going there, you know, unless you, you know, you start listening to, you know, what I've been telling you to do. I mean, it's, it's you know, what I, what I'm having to do is following your system of you know scraping and having lists pulled and ready and loaded and ready to go out okay and then responding to some of the text so you know like i got like one you know one helper that that's all they're supposed to be doing and then i have like a uh a lady who's calling all the leads uh and qualifying them getting all the okay. information on the sheet yep. um and then like uh, you know, I, she's only been in like four days, like four days, like doing calls. And, uh, you know, I was like seeing like all the calls she's making. I'm like, wow, you know, and I, I listened to a few of them the other day and she was following the script I gave her. Uh, and then yesterday, you know, I see all of these calls for like hours. Like, I'm like, wow, man, this chick's turned it up. And then I listened to the call and, and the chick's basically calling and saying, hey, uh, would you want to rent your own, you know, rent to own your house? Basically, it's all, you know, basically it's all she's yeah. doing is calling and asking them, they want to rent to own their house. And all of them are saying, no, 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 no. I have, you know, like so many no's. Yeah. And I was like, uh, you know, send a message like, hey, you know, you have to change that. She's not following the script. 
and it turned out she wasn't following the script, uh, you know, that she had been given. And so now I now I have to go and you know listen to the calls she's making now. On the call. I have call rails yeah. to listen to those and make sure that, like they're following the script I gave them. And it's basically like, hey, uh, I saw your house on Zillow. Is it still for sale? Right. That's yeah. all I'm asking them to say yeah. to get a yes. Yeah. And then at the very end of you know getting our yeses, we're just, we're just confirming the deed, the property details, and asking them if they would sell their house on, you know on payment. And then that's all she has to do. And then then the lead comes to me or um, you know my my other guy. Um, and uh, so there was a breakdown in there. And, and I you know I was going back and looking at my campaigns in the automated REI, and there's like two days when nothing went out and nothing was, you know, being pulled. And I'm like, uh, you know, what, what's this gap? You know, yeah. two, two day gap. It's supposed to be every day. We, we got campaigns going out, uh, like clockwork. Cause you know, if we don't have me, you know, ca- campaigns pulled and loaded, it affects me two days from now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you gotta stay on top of these people until you know, you, tr- you remember I said yesterday you have to try before you trust for sure uh, yeah so you know you might have to go through a few virtual assistants before you find the one that clicks with you too man uh, I know you're working with two or three it sounds like right you got three is that what you said two or three I got three but not, not only like one like two hours a day uh, you know Monday through Friday and then the uh, yeah. other one uh, you know, I got one for like, originally it was $3 an hour for the the two of them. And then they're like, oh, you will give us four. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give you four bucks an hour. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 I don't know, for like about two to $300, you, you can have like full blown VAs. Um, but it's like monitoring them. It's like a whole tour. Just like you said, like a long time ago, it becomes your responsibility to basically oversee them. Yeah. And yeah. even if you got like one VA to watch your VAs, then you still gotta watch that VA. So it's like, <laughs> it's, a job. it's a job, I guess. <laughs> you know, that's your VA. Uh, I mean, I, I'd rather be doing that than cold calling myself. Because mm. I, I hate the cold calling. Yeah, call. you know, yeah. Calling these, and if yeah. they're not doing it, I'm not gonna be, you know, I'd probably be slacking off. It won't be getting done. Um, but yeah, anyways. So. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the point. You know, um, they replace activities that you don't like to do, <clears throat> and or that you don't, or you shouldn't do. Uh, and at the same time, though, it is another. Yet again, it's a. It's still yet a responsibility. And uh, I think, you know, I was sharing this yesterday. That a lot of people think they they finally found a VA. Great, I found somebody. I turned that over to them, and I can forget about it. And, <laughs> yeah, you can forget about it. All right, that's right. Uh, so <laughs> there's some work, and 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 it's challenging a little bit to work with virtual assistants because of that cultural differences, because of the time differences too. And you know, because when you want to talk to them, it's in. in it, I guarantee you, it's in the middle of the damn night. You know, right? They are like from where I am right now. The Philippines is. It would be like 14 hours ahead. So it's 12:30 where I'm at. So it's like 2:30 in at night there, okay. Um, well, what if I sent him? A, what if you sent me a message at 2:30 at night? What do you think? You know, I I don't know. You may or may not get an answer. Yeah, um, it depends on how sleepy I am that night. Um, so it, they're probably a lot the same way. So there's there's some nuances to it, and it, it takes a lot of them do stay up all night though and work all night. I'm I'm convinced. Yeah. Um, but there's some getting used to with some of their scheduling and some of their culture and habits and, and, and likewise for them and you, and man, I've had to fire a few. I've had to fire a few guys more than one or two. Okay. I've had some heated conversations with a few of them over the telephone. Okay. Where I said some things I probably ain't proud of even, I mean, you know, they brought out the real redneck in me, you know what I mean? Like, like I felt like they were taking advantage of me, you know, like I have really been there, man. And what I learned is, is that there are, yeah, there are some bad VAs out there, but there's a hell of a lot more great ones out there. And there's just a real whole lot of shitty management skills going on inside me. 
okay like i really just i really just don't want to communicate with these people like what i need to like i really don't want to talk to them when before they get started i really don't want to see screenshots and reports i don't really want to sit in the evening time and listen to two or three phone calls they made today to double check that shit oh well you know i'm busy i got that i'm i'm watching 90 day fiance this guy this motherfucker puts mayonnaise in his hair okay uh that's more important tonight and next thing you know they slip a little too you didn't catch it and it's, it starts a snowball and then you you're having a, a come to jesus meeting and in, 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 in a real world, they probably should have had a come to Jesus meeting with you, you know, because you weren't really supplying them with the tools and the techniques and trainings. I've been that guy. That's what I'm saying. I, I've learned these lessons the hard way by burning through some good VAs. And I've burned through a few bad ones, too. But, you know, you get tired of that shit, right? It's kind of like dating people that aren't good for you. You, you know, like, you, you get old enough, eventually you just get tired of that shit. It's like, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to, I'm going to just pick somebody that's good for me. Somebody makes me happy. Somebody don't want to fight all the time and create all this damn drama all the time. And somebody that I can trust that pretty well, you know, they ain't lying to me on shit and hiding stuff, you know. Well, you might have to go through a few of those before you find the right one. <laughs> but they are out there. Well, let me ask you about um, access because, like, I tend to want to use fiber um, only because of some of the things that I can do at the low price point so I can not have to go broke in figuring it out. But um, there's always, well, let me ask this. If I stay on a fiber, should I be looking for those that are specifically in the Philippines? Because you seem to feel, or based on your experience, that the Philippine uh, virtual assistants uh, seem to produce the best quality. And on fiber, you tend to get, you know, Middle Eastern. You are in, you know, out in the yeah. in, in in Russia and and, and yeah. you know those areas uh, trying to get the work done. Yeah. Um, any suggestions in, in terms of that or any particular services that you found especially appealing? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, if you're doing short project-based virtual assistant type stuff, you know, like I need a logo made, I need somebody to help me build a cash buyers list, you know, Fiverr is great for that stuff. I, I use Fiverr all, a lot, all the time. Um, and it went up some though, I think. I, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe they have. Um, I I never ended up paying five dollars anyway. You know, yeah, I, I I always ordered a gig that was fifteen, twenty five, fifty hundred, whatever. You know, it was so Fiverr to me was just a, a hook to get me in. I never really paid five bucks. So I mean, but it's still cheap. And for project based stuff, I still use them. You know, anytime I have something, if I want SEO work done, I'll go there. If I want a, a logo made, I'll go there. If I want something else done, like, you know, these little short projects. But now, if I want a long-term relationship virtual assistant who's going to work as a piece of my business, now I'm probably going to go with someone from the Philippines, okay? I have a, I, I've used virtual assistants from the Philippines from Upwork.com. So that's a place to go. It used to be called Odesk but now it's called Upwork and um, that's a good place. You'll get everywhere else too, but you'll find the Filipinos there. Um, but I wandered around for a long time and then I stumbled upon this firm called VA4REI. It's the letter four, I mean the number four, der. So VA, the number four, REI.com and i just thought i'd give them a try they were reasonable what i liked about this idea was is i was struggling with virtual assistant management in my business these guys said hey we're different um our our virtual assistants are filipino they speak english they understand your culture and not only that we have a management team in place and we will manage your virtual assistant for you and you can 
bring any complaints or whatever to us and we will deal with your team for you directly we are here i said okay that sounds all the way live because that's everything i'm looking for <laughs> how much is it so i bought a block from them just to try them out and i fell in love with those guys they cherry over there uh runs the place she would shoot me emails and you know i would work out they would assign me a va that va had other vas that they would work with too from other you know from other types of tasks like if they'd have a virtual assistant that was great at posting ads and then they have another virtual assistant that's great at making phone calls but but i was assigned a virtual assistant now he was in charge of completing all the tasks that I give. Now, whether he personally did it or not, he was in charge of making sure that it was all done. And he had a manager. So if, and his manager's name was Cherry and she would email me with your virtual assistants. And, you know, it, it was nice. I felt like this is the first professional experience I've ever had with a virtual assistant crew. And so I love them. They're great. Um, I'm sure that they, you know, screw up and i'm sure they clown off and i you know just like the rest of everybody in the whole world me included but at the same time i felt like it was a a way for me to kind of get established with something more serious and yeah eventually um i just i just made relationships with uh, some of those individual virtual assistants in there and eventually some of them left and went to work for some you know for themselves or something like that and i i, I kept them <laughs> you know i mean it's just like uh, why why lose a good thing here baby you know i mean we're, we're going we're flowing right you know everything's good no complaints you want to move and do something on your own cool i'm going with you you know you want to leave me i'll get in the car you can't leave me no i'm just kidding <laughs> Uh, that's be. Uh, well, you know, you get to know these guys, and you kind of fall in love with them on a level. You know, it's not like a weird love, but it's like a, you know, like you'd hate to see them, you'd hate to lose them because you, you just, you, it's working, you know. And so you, you do whatever you can to keep these guys, and they do whatever they can to keep you. It's, it, it's a great thing, but that's a good place to start. I. If you want to start where I really started making progress, that's uh, that's that VA4REI.com. I needed that extra management in between me and them, you know. Are they, price, are they pricey? <laughs> well, they have gone up in price a little bit since I started with them, but yeah, um, they're not horrible bad. I think it's like seven bucks an hour now instead of five, but you know, Here's the thing, man. Don't ever take any of them at their face value price tag. You can talk them down, I'm sure. You know. Well, you might not be able to talk them down to three, but you can probably talk them down to five or six, which, you know, five. No, not, not in the aspect. I was just you know, trying to, you know, when you budget it, you only pay so much. That's what I was thinking. Oh, no, I totally agree. Yeah, they, okay. They, they have a price structure. Uh, they got a starter kit, like, um, it's a 40 hour virtual six assistant service about 695 an hour about 10 hours a week that's their starter kit it's about 139 dollars by week yeah and, they, and then it goes up from there yeah so not like horribly expensive but uh, but more than three dollars but but what you're you're also getting the management and all that with it see i mean if you want to if you want to tackle the management aspect of this and 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 be that guy and be the boss man and be the hard firm guy that i'm was describing and and run your crew like a pirate runs a ship you know i mean yeah then you can pay three dollars an hour but if you need that extra management in there this is a way to get it for seven or six ninety or whatever. What was it you said? Yeah, six six ninety five an hour. About that. I don't make any money off y'all going there. I'm just telling you, I've had good experiences. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, um, just a thought. Uh, the, the attractive part about that well, this I, is, that, is that they actually have um, experience with real estate investors, and that's their focus. So that obviously helps because a lot of the other ones you have to you know, they, they're kind of all over the place and you have to retrain them to think real estate investor uh, wise and 
sounds to me like they might already have that in place. And when, and when they assign you your virtual assistant and you see that it's this cute little Asian businessman in a suit, <laughs> or it's this, or it's this cute little Asian gal in a, in a nice little dress and looking all professional and businessy, man, this it's, it's classy, dude. They, they, they're stepping it up, man. They know what's up, you know? Um, it may, it made me feel like, man, I'm really tying into something professional here, you know? And, and, and it was good. I mean, and they are like that. They are professional. They care and they don't want to get screwed. Now, why would a virtual assistant want to work with a firm like VA4REI.com? Well, the question and the answer, I guess, to that question is um, the virtual assistants told me that they get paid whether I stiff the company or not. You see what I'm saying? So some virtual some virtual assistants have been stiffed by real estate investors before. Can you imagine? That. Imagine that, right? Well, mm -hmm. they have. They've been stiffed by guys that look like you. Okay. You've been stiffed by guys that look like them. Okay, who cares? What's the fucking difference? No, nothing really, you know. Um, so they like working for a firm like that because yeah, they don't make the full six set ninety an hour, ninety five. What, what they make is, is they'll probably make four or five dollars or something. And that's still good for them where they live in the Philippines. But even if you stiff the company, they'll pay the virtual assistant. And so that's why they want to work here. Wouldn't you? That's a good benefit. So that's a night. If you think about it, this is like the way shit maybe ought to be. You know, I mean, I that's what I thought when I heard that I was like well they're taking care of both sides they're taking care of me and they're going to take care of him whether I take care of him or not and that's you got to some respect you know <laughs> for real anyway check them out I'm not trying to sell them hard I'm just saying I've, I've had good experiences but um, Jessica wanted to know here in the chat she wanted to know if you have to have an RE license to do short sales now I'm not a short sale expert but um uh, my understanding of it is no. Does anybody else understand it in a different way? Um, no, you you don't have to be licensed, but most of the, the short sale negotiations that I've worked with, myself included, are licensed. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's a, it's a tricky process, I think, mm -hmm. which is why I have a relationship with Bob Vieira, the guy that was just on, you know, because actually... I don't want to do short sales. No. <laughs> it sounds complicated and heartbreaking, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a tough goal. It's a tough goal. The, the, the management of that process at most banks is shaky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it's uh, a pain in the rumpus. It is. Um, any other questions in the... Uh, Yes, uh, Aisha said it's a pain in the neck. Yeah, I said a pain in the rump, but she said a pain in the neck. Uh, anybody got questions out there? Uh, any of the any anybody, even if your camera's off, uh, Jessica or or uh, Rick or Rocky or anybody anybody else with questions? We, if not, Janet, uh, we, we, we'll jump into a role play here. Um, we've got about fifteen minutes left on the on the call. Uh, I'd like to keep these to an hour because we all got to get back to work, but. Yeah. Anything else? So I have the Google speaker, right? For some reason, it activated when you said rumpus and gave me a whole dissertation on what that meant. <laughs> what did it? What did? You know, I have the, the, the Google, uh, you know, yeah. the Google Assistant thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and it heard rumpus and, start, and just ran off. So I had to mute myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. You know, uh, <laughs> it does that shit to me, man. And the most inconvenient times. And I'm like, you know, I didn't even say, okay, Google. I didn't say, hey, Google. I didn't say Google at all. Right. And what's it, what's it doing? Sorry about that. See, now, now mine's talking. It Fine. said sorry. <laughs> Mine said sorry about that, though. <laughs> I don't know. Mine said it was sorry. What would you say? Well, I just stopped. <laughs> all right guys uh let's role play i want to role play a little bit um this uh the problem that we all run into 
we're on the phone with a homeowner and they say they want a down payment. How much down payment you want? Uh, you know, how much down payment am I going to get? How much are you going to put down? Uh, what what do I get? How much money do I get as the homeowner? And you know, if you're not ready for that the first time they pull that one out on you, uh, you'll, you'll you'll fall down probably, um, unless you're just slick on your feet, you know. And that that's a tough one um, until you figure out how to work it. And I will I will show you guys how I work it, but I, I'd like to role play this one just a little bit with you guys. Um, I was contemplating sharing screen with you. Maybe we'll talk about this a little more tomorrow even. But it's okay to give down payment to a homeowner. It really is truly okay. Can anybody explain why it's okay to give a down payment and where the down payment would come from? Anybody want to volunteer that? Well, it would uh, it would kind of lock them in uh, to the deal and kind of put a little comfort level so they feel like they're uh, invested and uh, a part of the deal from Jump Street. And then the down payment will come from the down payment that you receive from the uh, tenant buyer if you're doing a lease option. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna say that's the only time a down payment would be in effect. The rest of the time, I guess it'll be a full cash, you know, cash out situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some kind of creative financing deal. Yeah. Um, um yeah absolutely even in cash offers it comes up uh but usually is a earnest money is how they'll say how much earnest money are you putting down so that's almost a different story like that's a different topic we could talk about than than what we're discussing here which is uh like you were saying it's it's like the creative pretty house stuff and when you're going to do a lease option or a lease purchase or maybe something else creative and they want money down money 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 well, the money can come from that option fee that you collect from your tenant buyer or what have you. Um, so it doesn't have to be your money, right? But how do you deal with the homeowner and get the down payment negotiated out where it's like comfortable for both of you and the deal, you know, where you can still make money because you're gonna collect that option fee from the buyer, tenant buyer, and, and and then if you have to give the lion's share of that as down payment to the homeowner, that, that sucks, right? So you have to negotiate with this number down to where it's somewhat reasonable so that it doesn't steal all of your paycheck. And I've had homeowners hit me right between the eyes. Uh, I'm going to need 15 grand down. Oh, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna need twenty grand down. I'm gonna need thirty thousand down. <laughs> okay. Well, the house ain't worth much. I mean, it's worth one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand. Why in the hell would anybody give you three thirty thousand dollars down? And I'm certainly not going to. In those cases, these people, a lot of them, I I just bail on. It's an indication that they're not motivated enough for me. You know. But if a guy comes out and says, "Hey," I, I'm going to need five grand down or, you know, or something that's not like nutty. You know, I'll work with this guy and I'll negotiate with him a little bit to see if I can get that down where I need it to be. So let's assume that I'm planning on being able to collect a, a $10,000 assignment fee, uh, option fee from this tenant buyer. But my, but my seller is asking for 5k down in cash in his pocket. Could I do the deal? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, right? And I'd still make how much? 5 5g. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. You know, I'm okay with it, but it'd be better if I was making more, right? <laughs> make an 8 or 9. Yeah. So, how can you negotiate with this seller? and get him down to something more reasonable. That's what I want to role play today. Are you guys following me? You tracking me? Yep. Yes. Okay, so if I'm the homeowner and and I'm asking for 5K down, you, you're pretty sure you could get 10. Um, and I say, okay, well, I'm going to need, yeah, that sounds like that could work, but I'm going to need 5K down in my pocket, cash. What do you say? Go, somebody. 
jump. Five. Five I, wait, go ahead. Five K. Mm, well, um, I'll tell you what, Mr. Seller. Um, I can definitely do um, 2K. Uh, and we can uh, we can you know lock that in right now, and I can get that to you post haste. Um, can we do two K? Okay, all right. I like your response. Anybody else got a response? I'm a homeowner. I want you can get ten grand on the assignment fee, but I'm gonna want five K down. And you and you, I just said, hey, I think this is gonna work. But I'm gonna need five K in cash down too. You could do the deal, but you want to get me down to something more reasonable. What do you say? Go. Who's next? Okay, Mr. Mr. Homeowner, um, 5K, um, 5K, is that the best you can do? I like it. I like it. I like it too. Okay. In both cases, they, they use the classic questions, right? They, they, they're going to, they're going to re re rebut this with a question. Um, I like, I like it, I like it, I like it, Victor Edward. Anybody else, Jessica, anybody? iPhone number two, Rick, Rocky, anybody else? Ricky, uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, we can work on the $5,000 down payment. I also have to crunch the numbers. Um, but you know, there's gonna be certain uh, expenses on my end. There's gonna be marketing and, uh, you know, possible, uh, you know, traveling around and possibly other legal uh, fees. Uh, so well, if we minus all that out, um, I could probably do like fifteen hundred, and uh, we can close in forty-five days. Uh, how does that sound? Okay, all right. I like that too. I like it too. Um, I'm uh, I'm gonna take a turn unless somebody else wants to go. Anybody else want to go? Janet, Jessica, Rick, iPhone two. I'm not sure who that is, but welcome. Okay, oh, Mr. Homeowner, oh, $5,000, oh, man, oh, that's a lot of money, Mr. Homeowner, uh, man, you must be getting ready to take a cruise around the world or something, huh? Well, um, is there anything more reasonable we can do? I mean, I, 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 I'm not against you getting a down payment, but, but that's, that's a lot of money for me in the deal here, is there... Is there anything more reasonable we can do? Okay. All right. That's how I would do it. So, uh, and then I will let him name the next price. He might say, well, you know, I got to have at least 4,000. That happens all the time. Or I got to have at least 2,500. You'd be amazed at the haircut a guy will give himself. <laughs> I, I, I got a response to this. Um, I'd be like, um, well, normally we don't give anything down. Well, I mean, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm well. I'm gonna need something down. I mean, if I, I think we could do this, but I'm, you know, ain't nobody got any skin in the game or anything. I'm, you know, how you know do what? I know? Let's, let's do it. And uh, you know what? I'll do it. I'll go and get you that down payment from the uh, the first month's rent uh, on the property. We'll go ahead and give that to you right off the bat. Um, so that could be, you know, some of the down payment right there for you. Okay. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, it, it does need some new paint, and um, I, I don't know that roof was looking a little bit shabby, and um, I don't know, you know, I've seen a lot of reduc reductions in the area for prices, so, you know, like right now, the longer you hold on to it, you, know, you could be losing money, um, but I can go in and lock you <sighs> in, and, um, uh, you know, I'll get you that down payment uh, here in 45 days when I close with my buyer. Oh, but see, I gotta have twenty five hundred at least. See, I gave myself a haircut already. I gotta have twenty five hundred at least because I gotta have some moving money. I gotta rent a rider truck or a budget or U haul or something, and I gotta get it. I gotta put a deposit down on the electricity. Okay. Oh, and, uh, okay. You know what we can do is this. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. But what we'll do is, yeah. uh, I'll give you half of that when we close, and then when the tenant buyer buys, uh, you know, the property it cashes you out. Uh, I'll give you the other uh, portion then. How does that sound? <laughs> okay. All right. That's one way of doing it. Um, that's not very, it's not a far cast from what I do. Um, 
I will walk a guy up payment by payment. Let's say he wants five grand. I'll say, oh, ah, oh, oh, you're beating me up. Oh, oh, five grand. Ah, that's a lot of money. Oh, that's a whole bunch of smackaroos. How am I going to deal with that? Oh, let me see here. Let me think. Okay. Well, if I gave you one month's payment, non-refundable, would that would that be something we could go ahead and do or maybe not? You see, then he's going to come back. No, nah, man, I got to have moving money. I got to have at least 3500 He gave himself a $1,500 haircut. This happens all the time. And then I'll say, well, 3500 huh? Mm, man. Well, I see, I was thinking a little bit less than that. I mean, is there, can we do a little bit better than that or, or maybe not? Well, you know, that property's been sitting on, on you know. zero for 180 days. Uh, uh -huh. Does that mean you, you're not able to sell it? That's a good way to do it too. And then if he if he's insisting on the well the thirty five hundred is what I gotta have. I'll say, uh, Mr. Homeowner, if I gave you two payments of non refundable, would that be something that would we we would be able to do? You get the first month's rent, of course, for the first month. But then two payments non refundable that would be the the rent's twelve hundred and fifty, so that'd be twenty five hundred dollars non refundable. You don't have to give that back. Is that is that something we could do? Well, you know what I can, what I can do for you is uh, I can give you that. Um, I, I could probably give you half of that, um, uh, but I'm gonna have to reduce the purchase price of the house uh, by twenty five hundred dollars. Is that okay? Yeah. So, uh, lot, lots of good techniques here. Uh, Rocky's spitting some 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 different uh, angles that you could you could really you know. So there's not necessarily a perfect way. There's not a right or a wrong. But you do need to have a plan for this and have practiced it a little because it will, the down payment question, if it hasn't arrived yet, it is on its way, okay? And you will hear it. And, and I want you to be prepared for it because one, you're not gonna give away your whole paycheck. And then two, you're gonna step this guy up. You're, he's gonna start you at the top of the ladder, right? But that's not where you climb a ladder. You climb a ladder from the bottom. So take him back down to the bottom and offer him one step at a time. I, that's what I do at least. Okay, one payment, non-refundable. Okay, oh no, that's not going to work. You need thirty-five hundred. Okay, well then, how's two payments? Oh no, no that's not going to work. You're still stuck at thirty-five hundred. I'll tell you what, the difference between twenty-five hundred and thirty-five hundred. Can we split that and just call it a day? If I put three, if I put three grand in the agreement right now and send it over to you, is that something you can go ahead and move forward with? Can, do we have a deal here, sir, or maybe not? See, I've got, I just made myself 2,000 extra dollars. It was worth the work of going through this two minutes of conversation. Have you ever made two grand in two minutes before? No, but you've lost that much before in, in less than two minutes. <laughs> I bet you have. If you've been doing this long enough, you have. I have too. So, what if you're not able to put a ton of fire in there? Yeah, see, my agreement lets me out, man. All of this is contingent on my ability to place that tenant buyer. And once the tenant buyer is placed or, or once he's found and the agreements are signed, that's when he gets the down payment. That's when he gets the first month's rent and the key goes to the tenant buyer. Okay. Well, what would you say to somebody what would the, if they said that to you? Um, what if you're not able to put a tenant buyer in there? What would you say to the yeah. homeowner? Well, what do you mean, Mr. Homeowner? I mean, what what's happening now? I don't have a tenant buyer in there now. I'm just going to throw it back to him because I don't know what the hell he's even talking about. Like he, what he might come back and say, "Well, I'm going to need that down payment right now, like today." I'm going to say, "Nah, well, we got a problem, Mr. Homeowner. No, I'm not going to be able to give you cash right now. I don't know you. We don't have any paperwork. We don't have anything cooking here." But here's yeah. what I here's what I can do. I can make sure that you have that money in your hand before the keys are exchanged. And before, you know, is that something we can go Close ahead and move forward with, or maybe not? You know, a reasonable, motivated homeowner will say yes to that almost every time, if not every time. It's the unreasonable, motiv unmotivated sellers that are that are really, really trying to stick it to you here, and and not going to let you win. Okay. If you can't so, win, what do you do? So if they add them in on getting the money up front, you know they're not motivated, right? 
if they want cash in their hand, like right now for signing that agreement with you, that's a non-exclusive agreement that allows you to find a tenant buyer. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, I mean, if if they're okay with, with the deal and you offer that they'll get this down payment before the keys are exchanged, when we when we place the guy in there with the, you know, with, in the paperwork before he moves in, if you're okay with getting it before before he moves in, we can do that. But we can't we can't come out with it right now today. We ain't even done any work on this. So, you know, it, it, are you it, if I put it in an agreement, sir, that that you get the the down payment before the keys are exchanged and and somebody moves in, is that something that you feel more comfortable with? And can we go ahead and move forward and do business today? Mr. That's, you said it was non-exclusive. Uh, what do you mean by that? I use. I use what's called a flex option agreement memo, which allows that homeowner to market the property alongside me. I do as well. So, so in other words, if he beats me out, you know, he beats me to the punch, then I just I walk away with a goose egg. Okay. And that's a uh, contract. Yeah, you would never put money down on a non-exclusive contract. I mean, that's just crazy. Okay. If a guy's really, really pushing me hard, he's like, no, nah, I got to have this money down and all that. I'd say, well, you know, sir, if I were asking you for 60 days exclusivity where you're not going to market this property and it's just, you know, but, but frankly, I would maybe consider it then, but frankly, the numbers just aren't that great on this one and it ain't worth that. So um, if I'm able to put it into the agreement that you get the down payment before someone moves in, before you exchange keys and all that, is that something we could move forward with or is this over so what happens if you put a non-exclusive exclusive contract down and he market as well as you but he go in and and market it through a realtor and what 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 happens with you well most of the time they're not going to go list it with a realtor if you know if they haven't already but then the realtor rules apply you know you just need to basically say hey you know, you listed this property. Um, how how are you going to square up with the realtor if I bring a tenant buyer here? Are are you planning on getting out of that agreement, or is that a buddy, or are you going to have to pay him, or what? What what's going on? You just you have to ask him because ultimately they own that house. They can put it in a in an exclusive listing agreement with a realtor if they want. But ultimately, that's not an agreement that you have with the realtor. That's an agreement they have with the realtor. So that's their problem, you know. And what's your uh, what's your business license number? And are you listed with the Better Business Bureau? No, man. Why in the hell would I be listed with the Better Business Bureau? I'm just a local real estate investor. I'm not running a Fortune 500 company. But if you want to know my my EIN number and all that, that I'm a real deal. Yeah, absolutely. Check it out. Here it is. Give me five seconds. I'll pull it up for you. It's one five dash nine seven six four one three two seven. Registered in the state of Missouri. All right. Now that I've covered that with you, if I put down that information in the agreement and send it over to you, would would that be something you'd be willing to sign and move forward with me since I'm such a professional, sir? You know, like these questions are just bullshit questions from unmotivated people. Right. Okay looking to hang up this is stuff that claude diamond says to people that call him and, and they're telemarketers when he's fucking with them okay this guy's fucking with you if he's asking you questions like that this ain't the right this ain't the right sauce you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um somebody asked me that hey what well i'm gonna need your I'm going to need your federal identification number and blah, blah. I'm going to say, you know what? How about this? Call, uh, you know what? Call my accountant at 1-800-FUCK-YOU. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> he cleared us all up for you. <laughs> he will straighten your ass out. Okay. All right, guys. We've been here over an hour. I love you. I hope you got something good out of today. Because he's not motivated anyway, so he can go screw himself. Huh? Right. You know, you might as well, right? Yeah. I'll see you later, hey, guys. Hey, Justin, one more question yeah. before you go. I, I did a pool yesterday, right? Okay. I think I got about 300 people, but I noticed when I was looking at them today, uh, a bunch of them is already sold. 
from where'd you pull it from? A Zillow's crate. Okay. That's strange, man. I don't know. Uh, where are you finding out that it's sold at? Are you calling them or are they just looking on the Zillow? No, what I did was I took the address and I followed it up on on uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in my uh, Google search and it pulled up the house and it says sold. Yeah, did you did you check the date? Yeah, yeah, it was sold about a week or a month ago or something. Huh. Okay. <laughs> well, they haven't taken their ad down, evidently. I don't know. Right. Uh, maybe there's something in the filters that's wrong, or maybe I don't know. Hit up Tusev, see what he says. Okay. That's that's best I can say, man. He's the expert. Yeah, dad. well, see, because I don't, I you know, I didn't, I, like I was telling uh, Michael. I don't. I, I might text some, but I would rather call them and talk to them. You know, it's 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 good experience for me too. So. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, uh, a little bit of both wouldn't hurt. You know, right. Mix it up, mix and match, mix it up. All right, guys. Okay. Y'all have a great day. We'll, we'll talk soon. All right, soon. you too. Hasta mañana. All right, man. Bye -bye. Hey, Victor, I sent you a friend request. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll check it out. All right. All right.